My name's Dwayne England with uh, Swanee's Fishing, and we're going to show you how to properly remove eggs from a freshly caught coho. Uh, actually, a couple hours ago, but we bled the fish, and so we should be able to open up the body cavity and uh, extract the eggs out. Should be for the most part blood free. We're going to paper towel them, put them right into the bag, show you how to cure them with uh, Potsky's Fire Cure. So, with that, we're going to make a lateral cut along the belly starting uh, at the anus and we want to go shallow in other words the, the knife is going to travel along the belly cavity almost lying flat if we go too deep we're going to cut into the eggs so we're going to go ahead and draw that up get past the bone of the fins take it all the way up a couple of nice skeins of row there they're attached at the top just reaching in there you can begin to just remove the skin. Notice I have gloved hands on. Gloved hands on? I have gloves on my hands. I don't really want to touch the eggs with my human scent. You will lay those right on paper towels. Look at that. Most of the blood, pretty much all the blood is out of the skein. That's what you want. Here you got a little bloodline. That's perfectly normal. Again, I'm just uh, feeling that skin. Removing it, pull the skein right out of the fish, onto the paper towels, okay? Okay. Okay, so we have our skein out of the fish, on the paper towel, nice clean environment, gloved hands. Uh, you'll notice we still have a line of blood, which is completely normal, along that main vein that supplies uh, nutrients to the egg. So, to remove that, I just like to make small incisions right on the vein with a sharp knife. Now I'll just take my spoon side with a paper towel. Basically we're going to wick that blood out of the eggs. We're just going to travel down that line. See how it's cleaning that blood out of there? Wicks it away. Not pressing real hard. I don't want to break the eggs. don't want to damage the eggs. The reason I make multiple cuts is so if I made one cut clear down here, I'd have to try and force that blood all the way down. And uh, that takes a long time. So I like to make relief cuts, I guess, for lack of a better term. And work that blood right out of the egg. Nice clean skein. All right, so skeins are on paper towels. Nice clean environment. All the blood's out. We're going to butterfly them and get them ready to add to cure. I'm going to take my pair of uh, ceramic scissors, which work really nice because they do not uh, cut or break any of the individual egglets on the skein. So, need to separate this to open it up so we can apply more cure into the skein. If I just left it like this, we wouldn't have our cure penetrate down all the way to the bottom side of these eggs. So, we want to open them up nice and wide. No need to cut them completely in half. We're just going to butterfly them until they lay open like this. Okay, about like that. We'll take this other one. So now our skeins are butterflied. They're nice and clean, free of blood. I'm going to lay them side by side. Still on the paper towels. Uh, for these eggs, I'm going to fish in, in a few days for uh, more fall coho and chinook. So I'm going to use the dark red Potsky's Fire Cure. Uh, it's already got the krill in it, it's got the additives. This is a sulfite-based cure. Oftentimes people are worried that they're going to add too much sulfite, it's going to burn their eggs. I'm going to show you that you can actually add a pretty ample amount of cure to the eggs and you're not going to burn your eggs. But I like to do them on the paper towel so I can see how much cure I'm actually putting on the egg. Okay, so we're going to open the top. You're going to find the seal gasket inside, hang on to that. That's your moisture barrier. You're not going to use this whole jar the first time out. You're going to want to put that back on here when you store it out in your garage because this will draw moisture. Okay, but you put that back on, uh, you'll be good to go. So now we're going to add the, add the cure. Sprinkle cure, nice coating right here on the top of the eggs. Pretty good amount, not globbed on, not heaping, but enough to color the eggs to the designated color of dark red. You'll see, as soon as this stuff hits the moisture in the egg, it begins to turn a dark red, almost a purple. 
All right. And I like to roll this over. Get a little bit on the back side. Roll this side back over. A little bit on the back side. Again, I can see how much care I'm putting on. So now I'm going to take my gallon Ziploc. I'm going to grab my paper towels with all the cure on it. I'm going to set it right inside the bag. I'm going to shake that off. Put all the excess in the bag. Throw this away. Pretty clean operation. Looking at the top of it, I want to add a little bit more cure. I'm going to seal the bag up. I'm going to leave the air in the bag because I need to have room to tumble. All right. So now we gently are tumbling the eggs in our gallon Ziploc bag. This is going to allow the cure to begin to work around the egg, inside the eggs, down along the skin, surrounding each egg to where it begins to produce juice. All right. So that's the first stage. We did these eggs about 20 minutes ago. Notice the juice that it's already producing. If I dump that to the side, you can see how much juice has already begun to come out of those eggs. All right, let me see if I can get that. That's exactly what you want the cure to do. It has to produce the juice. I continue to tumble these eggs in the bag every five to 10 minutes for the next two hours. It will continue to produce excess juice. The juicing is important because that's actually what's taking place in the curing process. All the cure and the nutrients and the attractants are mixing with that, that juice and that water and it's surrounding the eggs, encapsulating the eggs, and beginning to cure the egg. So this is, uh, this is where people, oftentimes people make a mistake. They'll see that the eggs are beginning to kick out all this juice and they'll panic and they'll think they're making eggs far too wet and they want them drier and tougher. Absolutely not. The first stage of this is it has to produce the juice. Once it produces the juice, it'll go on from there. But the first couple hours, it's important. You just leave that juice in there, let the eggs cure the way the uh, cure is designed to treat the egg. Okay, so we are just uh, continuing to cure our eggs, continuing the tumbling. Uh, oftentimes people will ask, based on the line of products that we have at Potsky's, you know, why a sulfite-based cure? What am I going to use a sulfite-based cure for? And, uh, you know, I could be using this, this hot pink. I prefer the dark red for salmon uh, for fall time. Sulfite-based cures are ideal and exactly what you want for uh, West Coast, Washington, Oregon, uh, fall fisheries. Salmon are sulfite junkies. And oftentimes you'll hear me and Swanee say that uh, the more sulfite in your cure, the better. But too much, oftentimes, yes, you'll burn your eggs. With Potsky's cure, you don't have to worry about burning your eggs. The sulfites are an active ingredient in the cure. They're going to work for you, not against you. Sulfite cures for fall salmon. Okay, so the cure is on. Cure's on the skeins, and we're just going to gently tumble this around. I've left the air in the bag because if I push all the air out in the uh, bag is tight to the egg, you have no ability to tumble the eggs gently. So you want to leave the air in there for now, and you're able to gently tumble the eggs. We're not shaking it aggressively. This isn't shake and bake. This is a gentle tumble. Notice the juice that it's starting to make? That's coming from within the egg. All right, it's going to produce that juice. And for the first two hours, every five to 10 minutes, you need to tumble the eggs. That works the cure completely around and inside the eggs. Each egglet has a small hole in it. And within each egglet there's a lot of fluids and uh, nutrients of the egg. And the cure is going inside that small hole, extracting the fluid out. The cure mixes with the fluid. And then over the next course of say 12 to 24 hours, each individual egglet is going to draw that juice back in. So. In about two hours, this bag will actually be completely full of juice. You'll see the eggs in there, but for the most part, it'll be surrounded in juice. Do not, do not jump, dump that juice out, okay? That juice needs to stay in there, and you need to allow the curing process to happen and let the eggs 
draw the juice back in. And when it's complete, the eggs will be nice and plump, full of juice and full of cure. That's going to make them fish better. It's going to have all the scents and attractants in it that Potsky's puts in the fire cure. It's going to have the krill. It's going to have all the nutrients that the fish want. So we're going to sit here for the next couple hours. Swanee's actually going to be on egg duty. He's going to tumble these eggs, get them to juice up, and we'll come back and show you when this bag is full of juice what that process looks like. On. Okay, so we're back again uh, with Potsky's fire cured uh, red on our coho and chinook eggs that we caught yesterday. When we finished curing these yesterday, we had a whole bunch of fluid that was produced in the egg during the curing process. And uh, the importance here is, if you remember I said, do not dump out the fluid. Do not worry that your eggs are gonna be too wet. Uh, leave the fluid in there because the reabsorption 24 hours later is exactly what you get. When your eggs have reabsorbed all the fluid, you are going to get a very nice tight bag, very full, plump eggs, full of juice. That's exactly the type of egg the fire cure is gonna produce for you. This is the kind of egg that you end up with. And this is what we've been fishing this morning, 24 hours after we cured it. And we already caught some more fish this morning on freshly cured eggs. So fire cure's where it's at, go get some. Hi, I'm Bill Swan with Swanee's Fishing and Potsky's Pro Staffer. We're here to show you the results, the end results of a fire cured egg. Uh, you saw it before with Dwayne in the, the step by step in regards to uh, curing your eggs. Now I'm going to show you the end result of a cured fire cure egg, egg from Potsky's Fire Cure. Right here is a uh, end result of a cured egg. We're going to stick it in the water and we're going to show you how much it milks out just by sticking it in the water. Obviously there's no current here in, in where we're showing you. However, um, they still milk out very strong, very well, okay? See how it's releasing the, the scent in the, in the, the milking part of the egg in the water, which is exactly what you want, how it floats around like that down on the bottom. That's exactly what you want so that the scent goes down the current line. Fish smell it, move on up, and get the eggs. So, very important to have uh, good milking eggs, and one, no other way to do it but Posky's Fire Cure.